So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another class of PIB 247. So now that the RBI notification is out, I hope uh, your preparation are going well. You guys are uh, preparing well for the upcoming examination. And these PIB sessions are very much required for the examination. Okay? Because it consists of uh, news from Press Information Bureau, which is the most authentic source of current affairs which is the most authentic source of all the releases by the government of India. All right. So let's begin with today's class. And in today's session, guys, we'll be doing uh, the news from 28th to 30th of April, 2023. And with this, we will we'll, we'll, we'll be completing the month of April. Okay. So let's start with the session. And before coming to the question, let me announce you here that we have launched a crash course to ace this examination. RBI grade B 2023. This crash course consists of uh, uh, comprehensive PDFs, recorded session, live classes also, and crash course ka timetable aap sabko mil chuka hai that some classes will uh, take place on YouTube for free, some classes, most of the classes will take place for enrolled student only, right? And there is a mentorship session as well. Saturday ko pehla mentorship session hua tha, uh, more than 300-400 people participated in and everyone, you know, sabke liye wo kafi beneficial tha, alright? So if you want to uh, ace this examination this year, you can also enroll in this course by visiting the website anujindal.in. And yes, uh, in this crash course, you will also get uh, the comprehensive mock test for both phase one and phase two. 10 mock tests each for phase one and phase two, you'll also get with personalized guidance and answer writing ke sessions bhi honge, isme answers check bhi honge aapke, everything will be uh, there. Okay. So let's uh, talk about the very first question, which is about the national uh, health account estimate for India. It is about national health account estimates for India. And guys, remember, there are some of the very, very important news today, uh, which I believe uh, will come in your examination. Okay, so this first question is about the national health account estimates and you have to identify the incorrect statement. So let's talk about the estimates first and then we will come back to the question. So this is the estimate of 2019-20, the financial year 20, and this is the seventh consecutive national health account estimates report, right? Since 2013-14, uh, this is the seventh consecutive national health account estimate, and it is prepared by National Health System Resource Center since the year 2014. Jo tha, that is 2013-14. So it is prepared by National Health System Resource Center, which is nothing but National Health Account which is designated as National Health Account Technical Center by the uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Now, what is this National Health Account? What does it tell? So it describes health expenditures and flow of funds in the country's health system over a financial year of India. And it is also a tool which describes health expenditure and the flow of funds in both the government sector and the private sector. So these estimates are not only for the government sectors, but also for the private sectors. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the major findings, some of the major findings. Ki agar hum baat kare. So number one is the total health expenditure for India that stands at 6,55,822 crores in financial year 2019-20. And guys, remember this is this, these data are for financial year 20, right? And this 6,55,822 crores constitutes of 3.27% uh, of GDP and 4863 rupees per capita. Remember, this includes both government and private. Is my government and private sector dono included here, right? And this is the most important fact. If exam me question aayega, to sabse zada chances is wale fact ke hai. What is the total health expenditure for India for financial year 2019-20? And percentage of GDP aa sakta hai. And yeah, as I told you, it constitute current and capital expenditure incurred by government and private sources, including external or donor funds. What is the current health expenditure for financial year 20? It is 5,93,659 crores, which is 90.52% of this amount of the total health expenditure. While talking about the capital expenditure, so that's 62,163 crores, which is 9.48% of the total health expenditure. Okay, ye wala jo fact hai guys, this is very much important, right? This one, this one fact is very, very important. Now next is what is the share of out of pocket expenditure in total health expenditure in 2019-20. So it has declined from 62.6% in 2014-15 to 47.1% in 2019-20. So here we have made a progress. 
talking about share of government health expenditure in total health expenditure so what is the total health, health expenditure that's around 655000 crores so what is the share of government health expenditure in red so it has increased from 29% in 2014-15 to 41.4% in 2019-20 so here also we have uh, made a huge progress talking about government health expenditures share in country's total gdp theek hai pure gdp ki baat kare so it is currently currently matlab financial year 20 it is 1.35% and it was 1.13% in 2014-15 right and what is the per capita government health expenditure so it has also been doubled from 1108 to 2014 between the period of 2014-15 to 2019-20 all right talking about some other facts so government health expenditure as percentage of central government health expenditure central government expenditure overall expenditure jo central government ka hai usme government ka health expenditure ka percentage kitna hai so it has also steadily increased from 3.94% to 5.02% between the same period what is the share of primary health care in current government health expenditure so it is 55.9% and it has increased from 51.3% to 55.9% and finally what is the share of social security expenditure on health so it has also increased from 5.7% to 9.3% so in every aspect we have made a progress uh, and for this i would like to congratulate you all and the government also okay now let's come back to the question and let's identify the incorrect statement so it is the eighth consecutive nhs estimates report no it is the seventh consecutive so this first statement is incorrect government's health expenditure share in country's total gdp country's total gdp has increased from 1.13 to 1.35 this is correct absolutely correct share of primary uh, uh, primary healthcare in current government health expenditure has increased from 55 51.3 to 55.9 ye bhi sahi hai share of out of pocket expenditure in total health expenditure has increased no it has been decreased so ye to main aage ke number padunga hi nahi main increased word dekh ke isko incorrect mark kar dunga and the share of sse which is social security expenditure on health has increased yes from 5.7% to 15% no not 15% but 9.3% so jo hamara share of social security expenditure hai that has increased from 5.7% to 9.3% and not 15% so this statement is also incorrect so 1 4 and 5 are the incorrect statement which means option b option b will be the correct answer okay Let's talk about question number two then, which is about this Swagat initiative. So, which is the first state to launch tech-based grievous redressal program named Swagat in the year two thousand and three? So, if it was launched in the year two thousand and three, why we are discussing it in the year two thousand and twenty-three? Because this is because Prime Minister Modi uh, will be participating in a program to mark twenty, uh, which will be organized to mark twenty years of completion of Swagat initiative, right? And why Prime Minister is going? Uh, to attend this program because uh, this program was launched by prime minister modi when he was the chief minister of gujarat right and swagat stands for state wide attention on grievances by application of technology so as the name says it is a grievance redressal program by using technology theek hai so the objective of this program is to act as a bridge between citizens and the government uh, uh, using technology by resolving their day to day grievances in a quick and time bound manner right it was launched in the year 2003 by pm when he was the chief minister of gujarat and there are four components of swagat which means the grievances are redressed at four levels which are state level district level taluka level and gram level and not only this this initiative has also was awarded with united nation public service award in the year 2010 for improving transparency accountability and responsiveness in the public service theek hai so the correct answer should be why guys uh, gujarat option d is the correct answer because the state has been asked question number 3 in collaboration with which trade organization the ministry of health and family welfare headed by mansukh mandavia has organized the 6th edition of advantage healthcare india 2023 in new delhi theek hai in collaboration with which trade organization it has been done so pehle baat kar lete hain remember The sixth edition of Advantage Healthcare India 2023 is being held in New Delhi, and it was organized in collaboration with FICI by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, right? Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and this Advantage Healthcare India has been uh, named as One Earth, One Health, One Health Advantage Healthcare India 2023 in consonance 
with India's G20 presidency theme of one earth, one family, one future. So this is also very important. You should remember what is the theme of India's G20 presidency, one earth, one family and one future. All right. And the objective of this Advantage Healthcare India is to give emphasized on global collaborations and partnership for building resilient global health architecture. So it is all about building the uh, resilient global health architecture and it will emphasize on the global collaboration and it will also discuss the discussions will also be there on how we can work towards achieving universal health coverage through value based healthcare. So all these are objectives of this uh, Advantage Healthcare India 2023 and it will take place in collaboration with Fikki. Option B is the correct answer. Question number four. Again, very, very important question. It is about the logistic performance index. I believe that this question is definitely going to come either in phase one or phase two in your examination. India has improved its, its ranking in seventh edition of logistic performance index, which is released by World Bank. Uh, by jumping six places to what rank out of 139 countries with a score of what? ठीक है तो आपसे rank पूछी गई है और आपसे score पूछा गया है ठीक है so let's talk about logistic performance index and then we will again come back to the question so it is the seventh edition of logistic performance index and it has been released by World Bank and India has improved its ranking by jumping six places India has jumped six places to rank 38th Right, India's rank is 38 out of 139 countries and in the previous edition it, India was ranked at uh, 44th in the year 2018 and 54th in the year 2014. All right. Now talking about the logistic performance index. So as the name suggests, uh, this index actually, uh, you know, help countries to identify the challenges and opportunities that they face in the performance of their trade logistic and how they can improve their performance. Right. It is published by World Bank. The very first edition was launched in the year, was published in the year 2010 and it is published every two years, right? And how the scores are calculated? The scores are calculated based on uh, weighted average scores and these, these scores are based on six parameters. Six broad parameters are there. The maximum score is five and the minimum score is one. All right. Now, which are these six parameters? These are customs, infrastructure, international uh, shipments, logistic competence and equality, timeliness and tracking and tracing. So these are the six indicators based on which the logistic performance index is published, is released, right? Now talking about the rankings overall, if we talk overall rankings, ki, ki baat kare, so the top performer this time is Singapore with a score of 4.3 and it has been ranked at number one position. The bottom performers are Afghanistan and Libya, both having scored 1.9 and India has a score of 3.4 with rankings 38th. Okay. Now, India ki hum overall performance ki baat kare in all the six parameters, jo ne chhe parameters dekhe hai, to India has improved on four out of six LPI indicators, which are infrastructure, in which India has improved from 52nd in 2018 to 47th in 2023. International ship shipments, India's rank has improved from 44th in 2018 to 22nd in 2023. Logistic competence and equality, 48th in 2023. Shipping timelines, India's ranking has improved by 17 places to 35th position in the year 2023, right? However, India's performance has gone down in two indicators, which are tracing and tracking. And in tracing and tracking, India's rank fell from 38th to 41st. And in customs, India's rank fell from 40th position to 47th position, okay? So you have to remember all the, uh, you know, about India, India ke baare mein aapko sare indicators ke baare mein pata hona chahiye, in which indicators India improved, in which indicators India, India's performance, uh, uh, gone down. Thikhe? So let's come back to the question now. So what is India's rank? That's 38. And what is India's score? That's 3.4. And that's why the correct answer is option E. Let's move ahead to question number five then. Which of the following statements is incorrect about European Free Trade Association? So European Free Trade Association is, you know, a very old association. It was launched in the year 1960. But right now it is in news because ministers and high level representatives from India and European Free Trade Association states have gathered in New Delhi to discuss these prospects of resuming their negotiation towards the trade and economic partnership agreement 
बिटवीन इंडिया एंड यूरोपियन फ्री ट्रेड एसोसिएशन मेंबर्स और स्टेट्स ठीक है तो जो इंडिया है और यूरोपियन फ्री ट्रेड एसोसिएशन मेंबर्स हैं स्टेट्स हैं उनके बीच में जो ट्रेड और इकोनॉमिक पार्टनरशिप हो सके उसके लिए डिस्कशन की गई ड्यूरिंग दिस मीटिंग राइट नो टॉकिंग अबाउट यूरोपियन फ्री ट्रेड एसोसिएशन सो इट इज एन इंटर गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच प्रमोट फ्री एंड फ्री ट्रेड एंड इकोनॉमिक इंटीग्रेशन बिटवीन इट्स मेंबर्स एंड करेंटली देर आर फोर मेंबर्स इन इट आइसलैंड आइसलैंड लाइटनस्टीन नॉर्वे एंड स्विटरलैंड and it was launched in the year 1960 through stockholm convention and its headquarters are in geneva which is in switzerland theek hai ji so this much information is enough about uh, efta i hope this is clear and let's identify the incorrect statement so it is the intergovernmental organization for promotion of free trade and economic integration between its members this is absolutely correct it has only four members which are iceland lightenstein norway norway and switzerland so ye bhi sahi hai It was launched in 1960 through Vaduz Convention. No, through Stockholm Convention it was formed. Through Stockholm Convention. So this statement is incorrect, which means this option C will be the correct answer because we have to identify the incorrect statement. Question number six. Again, a very important question. Union Cabinet has approved the National Medical Device Policy 2023, which aims to help the medical devices sector grow from the current 11 billion dollar. to how much by the year 2030 very very important question so the union cabinet has approved the national medical devices policy 2023 with an objective to place the medical device sector of india on accelerated path of growth so basically to achieve uh, immense growth in the medical devices sector this national medical device policy has been approved by the union cabinet right and its vision that it will make india a global leader in the manufacturing and innovation of medical devices by achieving 10 to 12 percent share in the expanding global market of medical devices over the next 25 years agle 25 saalon mein jo india ka share hoga in the global medical device market that will be 10 to 12 percent and it will also help in growing india's medical device sector from the current 11 billion dollars to 50 billion dollars by the year 2030 right and this medical device policies policy has proposed the six strategies through which it will build a resilient medical device sector number one is the regulatory streamlining uh, which will help in uh, eliminating all the uh, regulatory red tape right number two enabling infrastructure world class world class infrastructure will be created for enabling the world class manufacturing capabilities in the medical device sector facilitating our indian innovation so that we can come we can come up with more innovative technologies in the medical device sector attracting investments in the sector through fdi through public private partnership human resources development because human resource ke bina no sector uh, can show growth and brand from positioning and awareness creation of course brand positioning is equally important so this national medical device policy has proposed these six strategies with the help of which india's medical device sector will grow to 50 billion dollars by the year 2030 all right so the correct answer to this question is option d 50 billion dollars moving ahead to question number 7 which ministry has launched the pli scheme for automobiles and auto components in 2021 with budgetary outlay of 25938 crores so when it was launched in 2021 why we are discussing it today because the ministry of heavy industry has released the sops under pli scheme for automobiles and auto components and which are these sops not required for the examination at all but since this scheme is in news we have to discuss it right so all the pli scheme has the similar objective of expanding growth of that particular sector for which that pli scheme has been launched so pli scheme for automobiles will boost the domestic manufacturing of automobiles and auto components right and it will also attract investments in automotive manufacturing value chain right that is the objective of pli scheme for automobiles and auto components theek okay? hai it was launched in the year 2021 by the ministry of heavy industry with a budgetary outlay of 25938 crores and there are two parts of this scheme one is champion oem and here oem stands for original equipment manufacturers 
original equipment manufacturers is the full form of OEM. Okay. And this champion OEM will make electric or hydrogen powered vehicle and under the component champions, high value and high tech components will be made. Okay. So this is all about PLI scheme for automobiles and which ministry is implementing it. So it is being implemented by Ministry of Heavy Industries. Option C is the correct answer. And guys, now let's come to the questions in short. और कुछ लोगों का ये मानना है कि क्वेश्चंस इन शॉर्ट इंपॉर्टेंट है या नहीं तो भाई साहब मैं बता दूं जितना इंपॉर्टेंट ये कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव न्यूज है उतने ही इंपॉर्टेंट ये क्वेश्चंस इन शॉर्ट है राइट सो यू हैव टू डू दीज क्वेश्चंस इन शॉर्ट एज वेल राइट एंड इफ यू वांट टू हैव द पीडीएफ ऑफ दिस क्लास यू कैन जॉइन द टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन क्वेश्चन नंबर 8 सेंट्रल स्टैटिस्टिकल ऑफिस व्हिच इज अंडर मोस्पी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड प्रोग्राम इंप्लीमेंटेशन has released a report payroll reporting in india a formal employment perspective to give different perspectives on the levels of employment in the formal sector the report has considered number of new subscriber under which of the following schemes so the report has considered uh, the new subscribers under all these three schemes which are employees provident fund uh, employees state insurance scheme and national pension scheme so all a b and c is the correct answer spelling yahan pe incorrect hai wo main sahi kar dunga pdf mein don't worry Question number nine: Which Maharatna CPSU of Ministry of Power has been conferred the Global Gold Award by the Green Organization at the Green World Awards 2023, which took place in Miami in USA? So, this Maharatna CPSU under Ministry of Power is Power Grid Corporation of India Limited. Now, guys, let me tell you one thing. While we are uh, while we discuss the, the question in short, what all you have to remember? Do you just remember this? पीजीसीआईएल हैज गॉट दिस अवार्ड नो यू ऑल्सो हैव टू रिमेंबर दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच हैज प्रिवेंटेड प्रेजेंटेड दिस अवार्ड यू ऑल्सो हैव टू रिमेंबर दी अवार्ड फंक्शन वेर दीज वेर दिस अवार्ड वॉज गिवेन राइट सो इन द क्वेश्चन आई ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड वेरियस इन्फॉर्मेशन सो ऑल दोज इन्फॉर्मेशन आर ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है ना तो ऐसा नहीं है कि बस पीजीसीआईएल का नाम याद करके चले गए आपको यह भी याद रखना है पीजीसीआईएल इज महारत्ना अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर यू ऑल्सो हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट द अवार्ड हैज बीन गिवन बाय द ग्रीन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यू ऑल्सो हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट द अवार्ड हैज बीन गिवन एट द ग्रीन वर्ल्ड अवार्ड 2023 थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री विच टुक प्लेस इन मयामी ठीक है ना सो दिस इज हाउ यू नीड टू रिमेंबर द क्वेश्चन इन शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन विच ऑफ दॉलोइंग इज द लार्जेस्ट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी फंडिंग कंपनी इन द कंट्री सो एज पर द वेरी रिसेंट पी आई बी रिलीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द गवर्मेंट ऑफ इंडिया द लार्जेस्ट Renewable Energy Financing or Funding Company is IREDA, which is Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency Limited. Right? Option B is the correct answer. Very very important question number eleven. The personal income tax to GDP ratio has been steadily increasing from two point one one in financial year twenty four fifteen to how much in financial year twenty one twenty two? Very very important question. So it has been increased from two point one one to two point nine four. Between the period of 2014-15 to 21-22, and that's why the correct answer is option A, 2.94. Question number 12. This was announced in the union budget. How many new nursing colleges in co-location with the existing medical colleges have been recently approved? Approved by the cabinet committee on economic affairs. This was announced in the union budget, and I hope you know the answer to this question. 157 new nursing colleges will be established it was announced would be established it was announced in the budget and now the 157 the establishment of 157 colleges have been approved and that's why the correct answer is option c question number 13 which organization has released the report titled promoting millets in diets best practices across states or uts of india in this report the details of this report are not required Not required because इसमें से क्वेश्चन आने के चांसेस बहुत कम है बट येस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज रिलीज दिस रिपोर्ट बिकॉज प्रोमोटिंग मिलेट्स के बारे में है एंड एज यू ऑल नो दिस टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री इज द इंटरनेशनल ईयर ऑफ मिलेट्स राइट सो दिस हैज बिन रिलीज बाई नीति आयोग ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन अंडर विच रिवर हैज इंद्रधनुष गैस ग्रिड लिमिटेड कंप्लीटेड एशियाज लार्जेस्ट अंडर वाटर hydrocarbon pipeline river crossing by constructing a 24 inch diameter natural gas pipeline through horizontal directional drilling method you don't have to go into the details of this method just remember 
वी आर डूइंग इट बिकॉज इट इज एशियाज लार्जेस्ट अंडर वाटर हाइड्रोकार्बन पाइपलाइन राइट सो इट हैज बीन कंप्लीटेड अंडर ब्रह्मपुत्र रिवर ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन अगेन क्वेश्चन नंबर 15 एंड देयर आर 21 क्वेश्चंस टुडे तो थोड़ा सा लंबा है सेशन सो प्लीज धैर्य बनाए रखें मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हेडेड बाय डॉक्टर जितेंद्र सिंह हैज डिवाइज्ड अ न्यू एल्गोरिथम कॉल्ड प्रेडिक्टर डिस्कवरी एल्गोरिथम टू इंक्रीज द प्रेडिक्टेबिलिटी ऑफ इंडियन समर मॉनसून्स हाउ मेनी मंथ्स अहेड ऑफ द सीजन दिस इज वेरी वेरी दिस वुड बी वेरी बेनिफिशियल फॉर द फार्मर्स उन्हें 18 महीने पहले पता चल जाएगा 18 महीने पहले पता चल जाएगा अबाउट द प्रेडिक्ट अबाउट द इंडियन समर मॉनसून राइट एंड दैट्स वाई द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए क्वेश्चन नंबर 16 अगेन एन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग हैज बीन अवॉर्डेड द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टील्स इस बात राजभाषा सम्मान फर्स्ट प्राइज फॉर द फाइनेंशियल ईयर 22 सो दिस पीएसयू इज राष्ट्र इस्पात निगम एंड दैट्स वाई द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ई Which country very very important? Which country will be hosting 2023 Quad Leader Summit in the month of May 2023? This month, this month only it will take place and it will be hosted by Australia. Option A is the correct answer. And when it will be hosted, all the outcomes will be discussed in one of the PIB sessions. Question number eighteen: Which of the following has developed world's first nano DAP liquid fertilizer? World's first nano DAP liquid fertilizer. Has been developed by Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative, and the correct answer is option B. Question number nineteen, very important important question. Till April two two thousand twenty three, total assets under management under Atal Pension Yojana is more than how much, and has generated investment return of how much percentage since its inception in twenty fifteen? About Atal Pension Yojana, we will be discussing in the upcoming government schemes revision session. government schemes revision session is on friday is on friday so we'll be discussing about atal pension yojana in this session that's why i'm not discussing it today and some people are worried about how we can do government schemes don't worry if you are an enrolled student you have to go through all the pdfs which have been provided in the course and you have to attend the revision sessions right and if you are not an enrolled student you have to attend all the government scheme revision sessions With a uh, with pen and paper in your hands, you have to make notes out of all those sessions, right? And past experience, this I will tell you. Government schemes के लिए मैं हूँ ना, right? So total pension योजना, the total asset center management is more than twenty seven thousand two hundred crores, and it has generated an investment re- return of eight point six nine percent since its inception in twenty fifteen, and that's why the correct answer is option B. Question number twenty. Again, an important question. With which country India will establish Net Zero Innovation Virtual Center to work in some of the focus areas, including industrial decarbonisation and green hydrogen? And इसके बारे में details मैंने इसलिए नहीं ली because it will be established. So once it will be established, we'll be discussing it again. So India will be establishing this uh, center in collaboration with United Kingdom, and that's why the correct answer is option C. and the last question for today but not the least how much wheat has been procured so far till april 26 2023 during ongoing rabi market season 23 24 surpassing procurement done in 2022 2023 theek hai ji so that's 195 lakh metric tons and that is why the correct answer is option b okay all right guys so that is all for today's class i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section, and be prepared for the uh, crash course. Be prepared for the revision classes. Uh, all the classes will be conducted with all the josh that we have in us, and we are also expecting the same level of josh in you to attend the classes to clear this examination. All right. All the very best, guys. Goodbye. Take care, and God bless.